Sean Sharon, I'm here to talk to an Irish businessman. He is extremely successful in his own country, here in the UAE and the world over. He is the Executive Vice Chairman and CEO of Dubai Duty Free, Mr. Colum McLaughlin. Colin, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be here today. I'm very excited. Uh, let's start from the very beginnings of you moving to the UAE. I don't know if I can remember that far back. <laughs> but in 1983, the government of Dubai did a contract with the government of Ireland to send a team of duty-free people here to set up and start a duty-free operation at the airport in Dubai. Prior to that, there were a number of small concession shops of local traders performing at Dubai Airport. And the, Dubai, the duty-free industry worldwide started in Shannon Airport in Ireland in 1947. And because of that, contact was made and a team of two, 10 people came here in 1983. I was one of that team. We came for six months on a contract to set up the duty-free. Um, that started in, as I say, the end of December, at the end of 1983. We opened the duty free on the 20th of December 1983. During that six month term, I was asked if I would stay here and run the duty free operation. I agreed to stay for two years. I retired and came here, and I'm still here. Okay. That's a long time. And we've grown up a bit since then. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, have you been here to the UAE before that, even on holiday? Or that was your first time here? No, it was my first time. Okay. I came in July 1983 um, to meet with Mohitan Ben Hindi, who was the boss of civil aviation in Dubai at that time. Uh, but that was just a three-day visit. Okay. I, then I came back as part of the contract in September of that year. Right. When I arrived in Dubai on the first, on the two-day, three-day visit, it was the 15th of July, it was the, the day before my birthday. Okay. I lost my suitcase on the flight. <laughs> I went to the Agra Center the following day to buy a shirt and <laughs> a pair of socks and so on, not realizing that in those days, all the malls closed for four hours in the middle of the day. Okay. I got there at two o'clock. And I wondered, what on earth am I doing here? Because it was about 100 degrees <laughs> and I had a dirty shirt. <laughs> um, and then I came back in September and I've been here since. Okay. Uh, so obviously, just like that one, I'm sure you have plenty of interesting stories because the initial culture shock of moving to the UAE in terms of getting uh, used to the religion and the culture here. What was that like? Well, it was certainly very different yeah. than it is now. At that time, there were about 250,000 people living in Dubai. Yeah. There are now 3.1 million. Right. Uh, the airport was very small. There was 3 million passengers through the airport in the first full year we were here. Uh, the throughput of the airport last year was 89 million. Yeah. And the same growth has happened in everything. Yeah. Uh, the tallest building in the Middle East that time was the... Uh, the Trade Center. Oh, yes. Which yeah. is 32 stories high. Right. Now it's um, dwarfed with all the other yeah. ones around here. There was no metro. Right. The taxi service was good, but there were no meters. Uh, yeah. Uh, you got a taxi somewhere in 1983, and you asked the taxi driver how much, he, and he would say, as you please. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, you know, things were very, very different, of yeah. course. I don't recall that there was a bus service at that time. Okay. Um, and uh, it was very simple. And it has changed tremendously, and so has our business changed tremendously. Yeah, um, and Dubai is home. To, the UAE is home to a, a massive. Uh, there's so many nationalities working here. The expat community. What was it like back then? Well, it's grown tremendously, yeah. of course. Um, I remember one example of in 1988. I was chairman of the Dubai Irish Society. And I remember checking that time, and there were 300 Irish passport holders living in the UAE. Okay. Now there's 11,000. Right. And that has changed in, that kind of change has happened in everything. Yeah. Like the traffic through the airport. Like our own business in Dubai Duty Free, when we opened 
on the 20th of December 1983. Yeah. We had 100 staff. I'm happy to say that we still have 25 of those 100 staff okay. working for us. Yeah. But we now have 6,200 staff working for Dubai Duty Free, coming from 45 different nationalities. Yeah. Uh, and it's been a lesson, and every every single day you learn something else. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, you, growing up, you intended this uh, career in dentistry. Am I right? Well, yeah. It was the family plan. Okay. That I would study and become a dentist. Okay. I went to London in the summer of 1961. The purpose of doing that was the same as many people used to do, to earn some pocket money uh, yeah. for the winter and right. save it up. Um, I didn't have much money saved at the end of the summer. I spoke to my dad and we agreed I'd stay for a while longer. Okay. And the outcome of that was that I actually stayed in London for eight years. Okay. Um, during which time I did a variety of different jobs. Um, I was a house painter. I was in the civil service. Right. I sold encyclopedias door to door. Okay. I was a bus conductor. Okay. And I became a trainee manager in Woolworths, which had a chain of stores around yeah. the UK at that time. And uh, it sounded very posh, but what it meant was that you unpacked the boxes and swept the floor and learned okay. all the business. And I became a Woolworth manager in 1969, and then I diverted from there, went back home and joined the duty-free business at Shannon Airport. Yeah. Do you ever kind of look back at your life and your career and think of how it would have been if you had gone in that direction of dentistry? I do frequently okay. look back and I, um, I'm thankful every single day <laughs> that I did what I did. Okay. I'm thankful every single day that I've stayed in Dubai for as yeah. long as I have. And I honestly can say I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever. And I'm happy to say that in June of this year, I will have spent 50 years in the jury free industry. That's amazing. 50 years is it? Oh, that's I know I don't look that. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, Dubai Duty Free. Of course, you are the main man behind this massive operation. You started so long ago and it's come so far now. I love talking about Dubai Duty Free. <laughs> yeah. um, it has, it's, uh, we recently celebrated our 35th anniversary. Like I said earlier, I'm happy that we have 25 of our pioneers still with us. It has grown tremendously. The, um, our business in the first full year was sales of 20 million US dollars. Yeah. Our business last year was in excess of 2 billion US dollars. It is the single largest duty free operation at any airport in the world. It has won 700 awards. Yeah. I sometimes get credited with being the main person behind it, but it's really all a team effort and, and the support of the Dubai government. And um, there was a, an incident where you said when you initially moved here, you were asked to make it one of the world's best. And, and you have done it. I was, uh, yes. Um, I was uh, summoned to a meeting with His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, yeah. who was uh, the, the deputy, the defense minister at that time. And uh, we were talking about the formation of the new Dubai Duty Free and how we would run it and what we would do. And um, his message was very clear that it should become best in the world. And uh, subsequent to that, we won some awards that said we were pretty good. And we won some awards that said we were the best in the world. And His Highness Sheikh Mohammed sent for me and commented on that and was very happy with it. And uh, then changed his direction to say, now make it the biggest. Right. And we're happy we've done that. Uh, what would you say in setting it all up to and where you are today, where Dubai Duty Free is today, uh, what would you say was your biggest challenge? Well, getting to know the region was difficult. And, okay. And getting to know the products that the passengers coming through the airport would look for. Okay. In those days, the duty free industry at airports was very much considered to be alcohol, tobacco, cigarettes. Yeah. perfumes and cosmetics, and right. that was about it. Yeah. Um, we immediately started selling different products. We set up a gifts from Dubai shop, for example. Um, we did not concentrate only on 
the old recognized things and we now have a situation where we have a very successful for example confectionery shop and um, we had to learn for this region that gold was a particularly popular yes. item yeah both from for export to India and um, for dowries yeah. for presents and so on um, you're a proud Irish man uh, more of a, a Galway man I, I absolutely love Galway we visited there so many times um, what would you say if you had to play a sport and I do know that you've played a lot of sports in your life you played rugby hurling tennis <laughs> if you had to play a sport as a professional career other than this what would it be well of all the things I dabbled in what I have preferred is what I do a good bit of now I play golf okay for example yeah um, I would like to have been better at golf. Okay. And of course, it's unlikely now that I'd ever get better. <laughs> um, my favorite of all the other ones was playing squash, which I did for okay. many, many years. Yeah. Um, I was in the final of the County Clare squash final many years ago. Okay. Um, I won a number of tournaments playing squash. I played in Division One in Dubai for many years as squash. And I didn't stop playing until I was 54 years of age. Oh, wow, okay. So if I was selecting something that I think I would have liked very, very well, it would have been squash. Okay. Um, and do you have any plans of moving back to Ireland? Do I've you no see yourself? I have no definite plans, no okay. immediate plans. Okay. The, um, we have two daughters and two grandchildren who live in Brighton in England, and um, we use that as our base a little bit. We have a home in Ireland, but uh, it's uh, infrequent visits only. Dubai Duty Free sponsor the Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby. Yeah. And they also sponsor the Dubai Duty Free Irish Open Golf Tournament. And uh, Breda, my wife and I, we go to Ireland for that each year and spend a little bit of time there. The, um, and we own our own home in Dubai, so we see Dubai very much as where cool. we're permanently resident. Of yeah. course, we are permanently resident yeah. here. And uh, we like to visit home, but we have no immediate plans to move there. Uh, for anyone who looks up to you, you're a very successful businessman uh, here in the UAE and in Ireland. Pretty much anyone who looks up to you as a role model, what would you say, um, words of wisdom, if you will? <laughs> Take shorter <laughs> steps when you're walking. Mind yourself better. <laughs> Don't smoke. I think what I would say to everybody is that you have to work hard and you have to work honestly. I think you have to treat every member of the staff the same and I think um, that's a, a kind of a creed that has spread through the duty free and we introduced into duty free 19 years ago an internal promotion policy. We have not recruited a senior person from outside in 19 okay. years and all our jobs are filled internally. So I think very simply work hard, work honestly, and treat people properly. That's brilliant. Uh, is there anything that you haven't yet ticked off from your bucket list? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to improve my golf handicap, Okay. but that's very unlikely nowadays. <laughs> I play with my son who lives here and he hits the ball about 100 yards past me. <laughs> um, sometimes, sometimes I win the wager, but um, the, uh, nothing else. Nothing else, okay. Um, do you see yourself uh, doing the skydive here in Dubai, or have you done it already? I've not done the skydive, but several years ago in Dubai, I did have a private pilot's license. I yes, yeah. I used to fly a little airplane here, and um, we had two instructors at the time. There was a gentleman called Tom Brown, who was a flight instructor, and then um, there was another man on secondment to the Air Force here called Tom Lecky Thompson. Right. And he was... Um, a very qualified instructor, and he used to aerobatics in the air. So sometimes the, um, when we were learning how to fly, he would put the airplane into spin, okay. and he would say, you have control. Um, I enjoyed that very much, okay. but I, I haven't done it for many years. Right. Now. If someone who has never been to the UAE asked you to describe, in, uh, describe the country in one sentence, what would it be? I would... I would uh, say that certainly one sentence wouldn't be enough. It's okay. absolutely fantastic. I think there's a terrific air of tolerance in the UAE and in Dubai, which is the one we know best. And that's evident this very week with 
the Pope visiting yes. Abu Dhabi. Yeah. And all the religious leaders from all around the world gathering. I think it's a unique thing. And um, we have seen examples of that over the years in the UAE. And it is really a genuine thing when you talk about tolerance and living together. If you take Dubai Duty Free, we have 45 different nationalities in our staff. And I guess in the UAE, there's probably over 100 different nationalities yeah. living in perfect harmony. Yes. I would say Dubai and the UAE is a perfect example of what the world should be like. Expo 2020 being just around the corner, what are your plans in terms for Dubai Duty Free in terms of Expo 2020? I've read her Expo 2020 in the preparation for it has created over 70,000 jobs. I have read where during Expo 2020 there are 22 million visitors expected into Dubai. Yeah. Um, we are planning to capitalize on that from Dubai Duty Free's point of view. Our senior people are in discussion with the Expo 2020 people uh, to see how we can help and in what way we can do. There will be certain products made, there will be uh, souvenir items made that Dubai Duty Free will be retailing and uh, in conjunction with Dubai, the Expo 2020 committee. Um, and I'm sure having it in Dubai is probably a stepping stone to having the World Cup here and yeah. having the Olympics here in the future. Right. I think it's fantastic. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Just before we go, what are your favorite places to, where are your favorite places to hang out in Dubai? In Dubai? Yes. I'm obliged to say the Irish village, of right, course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, I live on Palm Jumeirah and I like right. it very, very much. The, um, um, I'm simple in where I hang out, really. Um, if we have events in our Irish village, which is the Dubai Duty Free yeah. Home, um, I'm very happy to attend there. Um, I very often like sitting in my back garden and just dreaming about the place. <laughs> And um, I keep a bicycle on the palm and I go for a spin around and I love it. And the weather is perfect for that now well, anyway. It's perfect, yes. absolutely. <laughs> Callum, thank you so much for this. I cannot tell you how honoured I am to be seated next to you, really. So thank you so much for taking the time of your busy schedule to talk to me. I'm very happy. Thank you, Shireen. You're very <laughs> Thank welcome. you. Thank you very nice much. To see you. <laughs>